Now, all you can do is download in Yiddish, which if you want to do that, you can also do it. It's Lekuti Sichot Chelek Dalid, and it's the Sicha on Shlach. Zion. All right, let's just have a, 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 a four-minute refreshment memory refresher of what we're talking about here. This is a sicha of the Lubavitcher Rebbe was explaining what exactly happened, what are the dynamics over here about the the spies not wanting to go into Israel and convincing all the Jews not to go into Israel and to oppose Moses. What happened? Why did they not want to go into the Holy Land? So the Rebbe explains there were two reasons why. Number one, they knew that if they went into the land of Israel, that they would be constantly disturbed and constantly occupied, and their attention would be diverted from Torah and prayer and other holy things. On the other hand, in the desert, God gave them water from a rock and bread from heaven, surrounded them with clouds of glory that protected them from their enemies, from the sun, and mainly that they could stay in the desert and learn Torah, and that's what they wanted. Number one. Number two, there was another reason. They thought if they went into the land of Israel, that maybe God wouldn't help them so much. Because God told them that they have to do it on their own. And in the desert, God said, I did everything. And now I want you to go into the land of Israel. And you are going to make the decisions. And you are going to fight the battles. And you are going to dig the wells. And you're going to grow the wheat and etc. But I'll help you, says God. I'll help you. Don't worry. I'm going to be with you 100%. And like I said before, you're going to see in the end that I really did everything. But you have to, you have to do it. You have to do the job. And the Jewish people thought, we can't do it. It's just too much. The spies came back and they said, there's all these giants over there. And the Jewish people said, listen, in the desert, with God doing everything, we got no problems. But we can't leave. You know, we're going to go into the land of Israel. We won't succeed. <clears throat> so the Rebbe says, the fact of the matter is, the miracles that happened, that God wanted to make for them in the land of Israel, miracles that happened in the way of nature are even higher and miracles that are above nature. And that's the point that God wanted the Jews to reveal by taking them into the land of Israel. That being in the world and you doing your part and giving all the credit to God, this is a very difficult task. Only the Jews can do it, but they can do it. And that's what God wanted. And the spies said, we can't do it. And that's the big problem. And therefore, it says, Bechi Ledoros. The Jews came back. It was Tisha B'Av. And all of the Jewish people said, you know, God is okay, but we come first. And we want to serve God the way we want to serve God. In the desert, learning Torah. And this has been the problem with the Jewish people. Because if you say you want to do things my way, then there's no limit to the confusion. You know, from this you get to the tzedukim and the reform Judaism, conservative Judaism, and anti-Judaism, and this type of Judaism, atheistic Judaism, and, and uh, reconstructionist Judaism, deconstructionist Judaism, oh, wait a second, deformed Judaism, and everybody all of a sudden becomes God, and everybody comes to themselves, everybody comes to this, and this is a, a started off from here. This is where it started off. From. Jews refusing to do things God's way. Zion. Hora, what can we learn from this terrible and shocking story? What can we learn? Israel, from every Jew, Kufos. Every Jew has two periods in his life, religious Jews. Midbar and Eretz Israel, in the desert and Israel. Kach also every day. 
in the beginning of the day, we religious people, what do we do? We're removed from the world, we pray. Then after that, you learn a little bit of Torah, like what, Baruch Hashem, what we're doing now. You don't have any connection with the world. That's the way it's supposed to be. A Jew, the first thing in the day, he's supposed to wake up, and he's supposed to prepare himself, connect himself to God, remind himself, this is God's world. God will help me, God creates me, God is really good. The morning, don't think about the world. Think about the Creator. Amnon, <clears throat> there is true, you're re removed from the world. It's true, yes, there's the mitzvah of tzitzis, there's the mitzvah of tefillin. You have to do that in physical, yes. But that's not really working in meitzri v'gavolas olam. You're not really working with the world in the morning. First thing of the day, sure, you put on tefillin in this, but you're not really in the world. But after you feel finished praying, and after you finish learning the Torah, he needs litasek be'inyani olam. He has to work in matters of the world. Besakim shelin in rishus, in things that are what do you want to call it optional, not mitzvahs. Obitzua avodah shall be called derech echad oel. You have to be in the world. You have to work in your job. You have to. Alul hu the second part of the day, a person can think. Veshaz limud Torah when I'm learning the Torah. With this the read this is the wisdom and the will of God. As move and so I can understand shelo kaim is called mitzius. That there is all there is is just God. I'm learning the Torah. I'm doing a command. I heard that a class. Wonderful. Allah has come. Come on, much more so when I'm praying. When I'm praying, the whole world is just shut out. I'm talking to the creator of the universe. This is no world. Sha'az then, a filo mitzius shalo, all of his existence. It doesn't exist. I'm nothing. I'm just totally devoted to Hashem. This is like the Jews in the desert. Every religious Jew feels this. All there is is only Zulas HaKodesh Baruch Hu. All there is is God. But when, after I finish praying, after I finish saying my Tehillim or whatever it is, and I go into business, into the world, Milash and Hell of Hester, and the Torah demands, the Torah even says that I should do. What does it say in the, in the Ten Commandments? Six days you should work. Huh? Six days you should work. So you got to work. You, gotta work. you don't have to work a whole entire six days, 24 hours a day. But six of the days, you're supposed to work. On Shabbos, you don't work. What does it mean to work? You have to be in the world, business. You have to be a, right? You have to give change properly. You have to, be a, have, a good, you have to give, give a good product. You have to be interested in the world. Hanhagos al piseder olam, you have to go according to the ways of the world. If so, a person could think, how can I possibly have an effect on myself? That when I am in the world, when I'm in business, that the physical world won't control me. But what I'm sorry, she lo that I shouldn't get pleasure from the things of the world. In other words, my pleasure should not come from the world. My pleasure should come from serving God. How can I do that? When I'm praying in the morning, it's not so hard. It's also not so easy, but it's, it, at least there's no, all these distractions. Now in the world, there's all these distractions. Eventually, it comes out that there's not, what do you mean no distractions? The Torah, that's the distraction. Hashem is the distraction, right? I, I got my business. I have to, that's the main thing in the world. How can you avoid? How can you protect yourself from that attitude? The world is real and Hashem is secondary. When I was praying, all there was was Hashem. There was no problems. But now when they finish praying, I'm in the world. All there is is the world. And the Torah becomes the problem. Adarab, he says, A person that's occupied the majority of the day in business, not only is it impossible that then I can work on myself to be fit according to what God wants. Even more, it says the land devours its inhabitants. Hadavr ye balbeloto o mafrialo gam b'shat shosik b'torah b'tefila. 
that the world, not only will it confuse him and take him away from Hashem when he's in the world, but it even confuses him when he's in davening. Right? He goes to davening, he leaves his cellular phone away because maybe somebody's going to come, maybe you know, uh, amalgamated hubcast is going to go up three points and I won't know about it and I'm going to lose. Right? I got to carry my, maybe somebody's going to call me up. It's going to be that big business deal, you know, $10,000. I, I got to, so it ends up he never, not only does his godliness, his Jewishness, not go into the world, the world conquers his Jewishness. Shagam az, yiplu barayonot, all of a sudden there comes all these ideas and strange thoughts because of his worries about the world the course of the whole day. Kalapi <clears throat> regarding this, Omer the Torah, the Torah says, this is the mistake of the spies. The spies thought, Shekasher ben Israel, when the Jewish people are working in the world and when they are involved in the order of the world, the world of business, the world of natural, right, interpersonal relationships, Hari Kibiachalav, Eva Balabayas, and the Yochalotzi Kelo. <clears throat> that the world is more important than the land of Israel. Exactly the opposite. When you go into the land of Israel, even then you have the world with you. Like it is now. But the fact of the matter is, Torah and the commandments, Kiyom, doing the Torah and its commandments, has to be done in the world. Don't separate yourself from the world. A little bit you have to when you pray, when you learn Torah. Very good to be separate from the world. Very good. But you should have to know that the purpose of it is to be brought into the world. Al av gavula sateva. Even though you're in nature. Even though if just chafetz Hashem, if you just have the desire of God. It was an honest Jewish businessman. An honest Jewish religious doctor that they see that because that he believes in God, it makes him <clears throat> more it's a, a caring, more responsible. Right? It's not that because now I'm a religious person, so you're responsible to me. Yeah, I believe. No, it's exactly the opposite. Because I am a religious Jew, I am more responsible to you. I have more an obligation to my patients, to my customers, to my friends, to the world, to my family, because I believe in God. I'm a representative of the creator of the whole universe. Therefore, it says that if a person really connects himself to this feeling, that's what we're learning about Tzion, the essence of your soul, that the reason that I'm in the world is as an emissary, and with, I'm carrying out the desire of Hashem, then a person has the ability by means of Adon, Kayim, Bishle Muso. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Al Yedei Ha'aron, Hakayim, Bishle Muso, Gam Ata. Because what it says, the ark that's in the holy temple, which we said that was the example of what God wants from a Jew, that he should be in the world and not in the world at the same time. Remember, we said that the ark was measured and it was not measured at the same time. Elisha Gunzo, it says that the ark still exists right now. But the only thing is, is it's just uh, hidden. That's our job to unite nature with, what's, with, with what is above nature and to make from this lower world what we call a dwelling for Hashem. What does this mean practically speaking? Right, There's things in the world that get you angry. A Jewish person that really believes in God, it's a whole huge chapter in the Tanya about the Andrasa Tzavasa Ravash about what is wrong with getting angry. And why it is that getting angry is a sign you don't believe in God, implying that if you really do believe in God, you'll never get angry. Right? What about getting depressed? Getting depressed is, is a natural thing. It happens to people. Right? It happens to people for a, 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 a 10 seconds. As soon as you catch yourself, then a person says, think, one second, I'm, I'm a Jew. Right? I, everything that happens is from Hashem. I have a j- godly soul. Oz v'chet v'mekomo. A true a person, we have to remind ourselves. That's the, that's the benoni. The benoni is always plagued by bad thoughts and bad feelings and, and, and bad reactions, but immediately catches himself and he gets out of it. So that's the idea of being in the land of Israel, going to the land of Israel. 
And that's what we see practically in the land of Israel today. What do we see today? That they're trying to be, as we had, I'm not going to go into a political thing or not, but it's just an interesting thing that as soon as they said, we're going to let up with this corona uh, limitations, immediately the leftists in Israel said, oh, now we're going to start the, the, the public transportation on Shabbos. That's the first thing. Now we're going to go back. That's what we really missed when in the corona, we were locked in our houses and we couldn't have public transportation on Shabbos in Jerusalem and whatever it is in Tel Aviv. This is like, you know, we have to be normal. We have to be non-people. People want to go to shows and, and things like that. And, and so when it is, who is the boss? Hashem is the boss or the world is the boss, right? Well, you know, usually we say Hashem. Of course, Hashem is the boss, right? Hashem is the boss. I'm, I'm a religious person myself. Uh, this, I really embody everything that it says here. Eh, you know, you get angry sometimes. Eh, like me, I'm a <laughs> You get depressed. <laughs> I depressed. I'm always right. A ball of joy. You get confused. You get, eh, eh. The world has its effect. But if a person remembers what the Rebbe says, is you've got a uh, uh, what does it say? An opening to the pressure cooker. You have a ladder that you can crawl crawl out of, right? You have a ladder that you can crawl out of this whole quagmire, and then after you get out of that, you can come back into the world and you can be an example for good. And you don't even know what it means. You don't even know what it means. I've heard people, I remember, I'll never, I'll remember that there's a, whatever, uh, this rabbi by Vechter, he told me once, he told me once that he made a lecture somewhere and somebody came up to him like three years later and said, man, you saved my life. You know, I was going to go over to the missionaries and you said to me this, you gave a lecture and you remember in the lecture you said this. He said, I don't remember the lecture. I don't remember I was there. I don't remember saying it. I don't remember anything, right? He didn't remember, but he said something, right? You just naturally, because of who he was, you believe that it was a, he's a pleasant person, an intelligent person. And he said something naturally that had an effect on him. You can never have, an, have any realization what it means if you do things on Hashem's standards and don't expect rewards on our standards. Okay. <clears throat> it says in the Torah, um, in Kabbalah, um, and it's brought in you in the Kuti Torah, that the spies, they wanted to re re remain in the world of thought, machshaba, and they did not want to descend into the world of speech. According to another opinion, the spies even agreed to come into the world of speech, but they didn't want to get into the world of action. Okay, we know that God created the world with the speech. That's what it says. So if you want to know what God's speech is, just look outside, look at yourself. This is God's speech all the time. Right? This, this. <clears throat> so that's what we call the world. But what about the, what's the world of action? Well, let's see, look. I have though between Machshav and Vadiba, the difference between thought and speech is thought is between a person and himself. Speech is something that goes out to others. From this, we can understand that the whole point of being in the land of Israel, why it's better than being in the desert, is that it comes down lower. This is expressed not just the fact that they in Israel you could do the commandments because they're in physical because they're in clothed in physical things, and not only in the Torah that it's in the physical things, and also what it says called Dorachecha Do'eyu, and also when it says that in all of your ways you should know him, like we said before, she came calls that all this could be when a person is with himself. A person is with himself, <clears throat> he can be in himself. He can have his own work in the world or whatever. Call Ocha Adam all the time that a person only deals with himself. Even though he's in physical things, he's in the physical world, right? He's in the, doing the stock market. Maybe he's a writer, an investor. He still is in the desert. Even, let's say, he has a business. And people come, they buy in his business. But he doesn't interact with anyone. So he's in himself. Hachirish, the whole novelty of the land of Israel is working with others. 
other Jews, even non-Jews, to be devoted to another Jew and trying to influence another Jew to be a Jew, to be himself, to do a Torah, to do commandments. Someone comes into your store, someone comes into your house, some, a worker, you Jewish, sir? Yes. Would you like to put on tefillin? You have a minute? What do you say? You have a minute? Right? Now you probably think if you live in your own little inside world, you'll think, listen, this is insane. You cannot ask a person. He didn't come into my house. He came into my house to fix the faucet. What am I hacking him with, with religion for? Well, the, religion is my business. He's got his life. I have my bit. It says that's one of the, it says, midas dom. Shali, shali, shalach, shalach. Yeshomim midas dom. Says the Rebbe, you have to go outside of it. And you'll be amazed that when you go outside of your own little world, what you think, right? And how you understand. You say, would you like to put on tefillin? I got a pair of tefillin. The person says, okay. But you almost want to say to him, are you sure? I mean, this is a religious thing. I mean, you're not religious. But if you have any sense, you'll be quiet. Because people, Jews, want to put on tefillin. They just want somebody to ask them. They just want someone to show that it's important. That's our job is to go outside of us. That's really going into the land of Israel, dealing with another Jew. Alul Yitzhahor, the Yitzhahor can say, if I totally devote myself to other people and I have influence on others, so then what's going to happen is I'll feel an egotist. And especially when the other person is convinced by me and he starts to praise me. Oh, Rabbi, you're great. You saved my life then I'm really going to feel like an egotist. Then when I'm an egotist, ooh, being an egotist, that's the worst of all. That's the source of all evil. I'll just keep to myself. I'll be holy. I'll say good morning. I'll be a nice guy and everything. As soon as I start to become, right? And there are people like that. There are people like that. There are people who are great speakers and they, they speak and they can inflame whole crowds. And they become tremendous egotists, right? If anybody says anything about them, or they just go berserk, they just go wild. They cr I've seen it. Harry, so a person would say, listen, it's better I shouldn't get myself into this whole business. I'll, I'll just keep to myself. And then I won't be an egotist. What's the answer? <clears throat> this is exactly what the spies said. The spies said the land of Israel devours its inhabitants. <clears throat> if I start to get into the land, it devours its inhabitants. What I mean, maybe I'll be successful. And if I'm, if I'm successful, it's going to go to my head. And if it goes to my head, then I'm going to leave God. Won't want anything to do with him. Better to stay in the desert. Then I know that everything is coming from God. I'm never going to be an egotist. But the fact of the matter is, says the Rebbe, if you're thinking about what, if what you do is only because that's what God wants, Lozu not only will it not bring you to a descent, to be egotist, but exactly opposite. <clears throat> this is the reason you're created in the world. This will elevate you. But still, a person, the Yates or Hora, can still say, yes, it's true. <clears throat> you have to work with others. Really, we have to have, you know, have an effect on another Jew. But it's just enough if I, you know, I'll pick another Jew that's like me. Why do I have to come down to a Jew that it could, he could draw me down? Like it says in the, in the, in the Rebbe Azazichah, why is it in the night of Seder Pesach that the wise son is put right next to the evil son? It says one reason is because only the wise son has the power <clears throat> to deal with the evil son, that he can <clears throat> make him not evil anymore. <clears throat> Return. But on the other hand, he has to know that he's right next to him. He's not far away from him himself. The evil son is doing so because he's got a good, lot of good <clears throat> influences, a lot of good reasons and excuses, really good excuses, for not doing Judaism. <clears throat> the whole world doesn't do it. He's, there's only, what, 0.01% or something of the world is Jewish, or 0.02%. But why should I be, why have to be different? <clears throat> he could have an effect on the wise son also. <clears throat> <clears throat> so says the Rebbe, what's the, the, what's the answer? That's the same exact thing that the spies said. We're going to go into the land of Israel and we're going to be part of the land. We're going to be drawn into the land. The nature of pre people is the low people want to draw misery loves company, right? Instead of me convincing them, they'll convince me. 
<clears throat> so there is another teaching from this whole business, and that is that speaking to another person is not enough. Speaking to a person is not enough. You have to bring the person to deed. The difference between speech and action is speech, it's really, it's true that it go, you go out of yourself, yes. <clears throat> but at least speech, I'm going out of it, so we can have a, a conversation. I'm conversing with, the, let's hear your opinion, heal my opinion. But when it comes to, if it's only in speech, then if you're talking to someone who is something, he understands what you're saying, he understands your language. But if we're talking about speaking to a rock, that's not going to have much of an effect on you. That's what we're saying. You, you have to do deeds. You have to be in the land of Israel. But it teaches us that you have to make have an impression and draw Jews closer, even if this Jew is not to your level whatsoever. You have to go into Eretz Israel, even a Jew that's just like the ground, like a rock. I, like I says, like a, a stain, a, a book. AIDS is like a, you can't, there's no way you're going to convince him. Even a person like this, you have to at least try to have some sort of an influence on him. And usually people like that, the only way you can have an influence on them is if you really believe it yourself. <laughs> By example, the Dav and only by means of this you can come to a true elevation. Like it says, Allah Nale, only by working with Jews who have no connection far away as possible from Judaism, right? By having saying a good word, a pleasant comment, a good morning. He, the person calls you all sorts of names. You're an idiot, you're a fool, you're this, you hate the religious people. You can say to him, listen, you've got a point, you know, I can understand what you're, and, and even more, maybe you're right, you know, you're right, but listen, maybe you're not right. Maybe you're not right. You know, I, sometimes I agree with you, I am, but, but maybe you're not right. Listen, I mean, and then say, change the subject, tell them a story, tell them this, because people want to hear. People know that there's something to Judaism, and they all, sometimes all they're missing is just a good example. All they're missing is a pleasant answer, pleasant reply. That's all. There's, a, there's what we call a, 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 a nuclear reaction of negativity. Right? Someone makes me mad, so I'm going to make someone else mad. And that person is going to make somebody else mad, and he's going to make someone else mad, and he's going to make 10 people mad. And this guy is angry. One person tries to make me mad, and I am not angry. I say, God bless you. Have a good day. And he looks at my eyes, and he sees that I'm really not shooting out arrows at him. How can I do that? I make excuses for him. Same way I make excuses for myself. Yeah, the reason he's doing this, he's probably educated. And he's, and maybe he's right. You know, could be. I, I used to live in, in B'nai Brak. I'll just tell you, so, and then I'll tell you another story. I used to live in B'nai Brak. This was in, 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 in the 70s. And back then, there were a lot of people that were really, really against Chabad. They had this one rabbi. That, <laughs> he made a whole thing. So these people, they would come to me. Oh, you're Chabad. You're there, you're there. So I would say to them, you know, you know what, maybe you're right. You know, maybe you're right. Maybe it's right. I said, maybe, maybe you got a good point. You know, I mean, I'm just, you know, I don't know everything. You know, maybe you, you know something I don't know. I, don't, I want to serve God. I don't want to do sins. I don't want to be an idolater or something like that. I said, you've got an obligation to, to convince me. Bring me some proof, you know, some reasons. And I'm, I'm really listening because I really want to be convinced, you know, that that's all these things you say, you know. And they just wouldn't have anything to say. And one after the other, I was, uh, uh, well, uh, I once met up with a Chabanek that he didn't know uh, a Gomorrah in, in Sanhedrin. It was, uh, that, good, but that doesn't mean that they're idol worship. And maybe you met up with one person. Uh, and they had nothing to say. Well, if I would have said, what are you talking about? I, you are, I am, you, it's you. So if so, there's a big wall between Sometimes a person only has to have as an, you know, a calm answer. A person says, okay, you know, you got a point. I don't agree with you totally. <laughs> I remember somebody with Rabbi Mendel Futafas. He brought him all these reasons why the Rebbe is not Mashiach. Why you shouldn't say this is, of course, uh, what, uh, 30 years ago. 28 years ago, something like that. 
Rebbe is not Mashiach, can't be Mashiach. He sat and he listened 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 and the person went on and on and on and on. And after he finished the whole thing, Rebbe Mendel said, I don't agree with you. <laughs> I don't agree. That's all, that's all he said to his is, I don't agree. <laughs> then bring it. Uh, okay, my friends, I'll, I'll tell a story. Ready, story. 